Hi and welcome to Dark Principles. Today we're going to be discussing arrays and data types and showing how we can combine the two technologies to make the organization and running of our programs a lot easier. First of all, I want you to imagine a situation. You're programming a game with seven fighters. Um, you have to f uh, face each fighter um, per level so every time you go up a level they become harder and you have to kill them more times now at some point of the program you're going to need to enter this basic data and what we're going to do is we're going to organize it um, by using an array and data types so we're going to start off by using a data type and we're going to call this entities you can use any name for data types as long as they don't clash with the existing command set. For instance, I can't call it um, type uh, data because that's an existing command. You can tell because they turn up in blue, so it's easy to identify them. So we're just going to type in entities again. And I'm going to type in end type because that's how you uh, you end the classification of the type and everything in between. And now we're going to assign some different variable types. So name as string. I'm assuming you know what strings, floats and integers are as usual. If you don't, you're free to go and grab my tutorial DVDs. They'll teach you what you need to know about that. Uh, damage as float and lives as integer. So we've got three different data types all set up under the data type um, sorry under the uh, the name entities and I do apologize I told a little lie it's also made entities turn blue as well so that's uh, something that's changed since the old editor um, dim entity sorry enemies six as entities now what we're basically doing here is creating an array with seven slots even though I've typed in six here remember zero in programming counts as a number so we will be counting zero one two three four five six rather than one two three four five six uh, next we're going to assign some data some uh, in the form of names so we're just going to create a data statement here so we're going to give them the name Sam Rocky Mr. B, Tex, Crusher, Masher, and whoops, I'm nearly typing and and Grunt. So we've set up a simple data statement there, and now we're going to create a loop that will automatically put all this um, into our program. Um, rather than having to type in manually. Uh, normally if you were going to type it in manually you'd have to sort of type it in as uh, um, enemies you have to give it a slot number zero um, dot name whoops read and you'd basically have to repeat this line seven times one two three four five six seven yeah uh, you have to repeat this line seven times with the um, slot ID updated every single time in order to read that data statement into the array and as you can see that's quite a lot of work we've got six lines here now I can do the same thing um, for all of this and the rest of the information in one two three sorry one two three four five six seven eight nine lines so we're just adding three lines on top of that to get all this data into it so loops are extremely useful and we use a classic for x equals zero to six and we're going to do exactly what I did uh, read enemies dot uh, sorry X now if you notice we put the X in there instead of a number um, basically as this program loops through X will equal whatever step we're on so uh, it will start at zero then go one two three four etc so we're going to give that name and that's all we need for that. I mean, we've already reduced six lines of code potentially down to three, which isn't bad. Um, you don't have to do this, but I like to type in next x. 
Um, next we're going to increase a temporary variable by 0 0.1 um, it's just something a throwaway variable doesn't matter if it's global or anything um, it's not going to exist outside this loop we're only going to use it to assign a number to the float section so enemies open bracket x close bracket and dot damage equals temp and what this is basically doing is it's counting um, up 0 0.1 so as this is counting to 0, uh, zero to 6 and I want decimal points so I'm just creating this ink here and uh, having that count up in the same way but instead it would be 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3 etc uh, then the final one is going to be enemies uh, open bracket x close bracket dot lives equals x so now every one of these characters as they go up in the cycle will automatically be assigned um, an increase of their damage potential by 0 0.1 and the number of times they've not that they can be knocked down before getting back up will also be increased so as you can imagine in the game context this would work quite well under that situation now rather than creating a second loop just to uh, um, display all the information I'm also going to integrate that into um, this loop here um, so text 10 comma 12 times X and um, what this is basically saying is 12 times X basically so uh, for the first time for the first loop is going to be 12 times 0 which is 0 the next one is going to be 12 then 24 etc etc so we're just multiplying it by the X value there and we're going to give this the names because it's a straight up string uh, n m is open bracket x and dot name and that's just going to display uh, the name of the character and we're also going to display their damage potential and the number of lives they have so text uh, we need to make some space um, because some of those lines are quite long I'm going to give you a nice safe buffer of 75 pixels across the screen and we're going to do the 12 times x again because we're going down in the y direction in the same fashion and uh, this time I'm going to use a command string um, I will actually tell you more about these commands in the next tutorial I'm preparing to write um, so for now I'll just accept that it converts uh, an integer or float into a, um, a string variable that the text statement can handle uh, duh, duh, duh. and we need to give that the name um, enemies dot damage uh, I forgot the bracket and X and that will then display that information and the final line of course is going to be the live so text again we're going to give it plenty of space so 125 comma 12 times X and we're going to use a string command again and enemies open bracket x dot lives and close bracket I'm also going to type in comma 2 there to reduce the number of uh, potential decimal places that it reads otherwise it will come up as quite a long number and hopefully now providing I've typed it in right which I almost never have in fact actually I'm getting ahead of myself I need to put in wait key and end otherwise the program will just read all that display on the screen then vanish and we'll never get to see anything so uh, assuming I haven't made any mistakes there which I probably have we'll compile the program and see what happens and as you can see I have made a mistake um, let's have a look ah looks like a classic spelling error so we'll copy that we'll put that on there and it should now work there we go. So, aside from my bad spelling, the program has worked flawlessly. As you can see, Sam has a damage potential of 0 0.1. Um, he has zero lives, so if you knock him down once, he's not going to get back up. Rocky has a damage potential of 0 0.2. Um, you can uh, knock him down once and he's going to get back up. Then Mr. B, etc, etc. So, as you can see, this is a very quick and easy way of generating the data you need to assign to each character um, for uh, their potential. And this is also incredibly useful for things such as um, 
sorry my mind's gone blank for RPGs so uh, when you're assigning a lot of class data um, to characters such as their armor strength their health all this kind of thing um, they can be nice and logically named so as you can see instead of having um, I mean, what would, what would we normally have had to do? If I was going to recreate this program without using data types, I would have ended up with um, basically three types of arrays. I would have had enemies, I would have had... Um, no, I would have had uh, um, name, damage and lives as separate... Um, sorry, my mind's going blank in, As separate uh, arrays. So uh, once you've got those array set up then you would assign the data in the usual way but it's less readable and it's less easy to maintain so all we've got here is one particular um, array set and all we've done then is assign it to a data type so um, the same slot will apply for each character as well so I know that if I call slot um, zero on any of these arrays I'm going to get the data that's relevant to Sam if I call slot six then I'm going to get all the data that is relative to Grant so if you're dealing with multiple enemies each with their own um, classes and weapons and all sorts of whatever details you wish to add which is all going to be number driven um, then this is a very neat way of um, of naming all of those um, having separate data while still maintaining each slot um, to apply to the same thing so anytime I, I, I call slot 4 I'm going to get Crusher I'm going to get his data of 0 0.5 and I'm going to get the number of times he can, he can be uh, so he can get up will be four times so uh, a very easy way of organizing your programs and especially when you're dealing with large complex code RPGs RTSs anything like that then you will find this method invaluable so stay for the next tutorial if you want to know how the string um, feature works. I will also be discussing the val um, command uh, which will also help convert um, your data in another way. So uh, I'll see you back for that.